So here's the final moment. We finally get to start it up. I love it. I bought the this ignition uh, key start. Let's see what we got here. Put my fuel in it. The winch is used to haul the log up the log ramp to get it up on top of the song. For this initial log, we're doing a small log just to kind of get a feel for it and so that Philip can just give that machine its first trial. Now Philip will secure the log. He's going to adjust the log supports that are there on that side, and they have to be below the cutting line. This side we have the log clamps, and they're movable to be adjustable for the size of log. They also need to be below the cutting line. And once he gets it into position, he'll clamp it down, and that will secure the log while it's being milked. Philip uses the hand crank to lift the saw blade to set up the height of the blade for his cutting. Each cut, he makes an adjustment to determine the width of the board. Washer's dummy on this thing. Actually, you know what? Oh, it's on that one. It's not sticking. So, no, it's still within a quarter. I want to make sure she's still tracking. The same now that I ran it. I'm looking at a fixed point on my bearings. And I'm not hearing any rubbing on my bearings either. Uh huh. That one's a lot further out. That one's not. That one I have to adjust. The paper's thickness, which is 0 
off the blade. What I've also noticed is these blocks need to be perfectly 90 degrees off the blade, otherwise your guides rub on one side more than the other. The tank that Philip is adjusting is the lubrication tank. There is a, a tube that goes down to the blade and it lubricates and cleans the blade. And this ensures that it doesn't build up, which would cause the blade to run uneven.
Purdy. It's nice and now we've got our own hood. You cut your head off in that. Philip is adjusting the cables that lift the saw head so it will lift evenly. Close. 
you don't catch it. You can lift it up and come back. So, depending on what else I want to do with this log, I want to end up with a 4x4 four four around that center core. So I can take a couple more boards, and then I can take a couple more boards and come here. That's pretty much what I want to do. Right now, I can just make boards. But typically, your core, you make that a piece, so you make boards up to it. It's kind of weird to show you. So if I took this circle, the center of it is square. So I can take the boards off of this side, stop. I can take them off this side, stop. Or I can take them, you know, this way with the grain, or this way with the grain, depending on what I want to use. So the bigger the log, what I can get out of small log, I can only get a foot of post, that's about it. Or I can slap it all out. The problem is the stuff starts to warp in different areas. So if you, you got to a two by four at the bottom, or two by, how do you hold it? Just run them all the way down. That's why I had that side, that side stop turn. This, I have it turned. So I can run that all the way down. There is the last minimal piece that I can cut, but you really got to think ahead. So when you're cutting, if you want the good stuff, you're cutting it off the top. You basically end up with a scrap piece at the bottom. So I can only cut down to a certain measurement. I don't know how close we can get down to that. I'm thinking I can get down within three quarters of an inch to the top of this rail. That right there is about a quarter. So what? Let's check it. That's it. Is that about an inch? Otherwise, my pulling bracket will touch. I was a sixteenth off. I said three quarter, eleven sixteenths. All as I can take. So right now, you see how my my rings are going. I can get more boards out of it going this way than that way. Depends on what I'm gonna need. I basically put my order in and make it custom. So right there would be an inch. I want to plane it, get nice clean sides, and make it a little bit thicker. This is what I'm going to do. Although, I take, I do an inch, that's a pretty big hole. Still have about five eighths. I'm going to run into the planer, so it's still a pretty decent size hole. So I'll leave it at a minute. Bring up. Got warp that is. That's the way it's gonna go out. Something I have to learn how to cut certain things. To make sure they don't warp down the road. How can it be warped when it's first cut? Because there's tension. If you see a tree that's angled like that, the grain is tighter on the side of that limb than it is on the other side. So when you cut this through, you just release that tension. Follow me? So when you're looking at the board, this back side, the grain's real wide. Look how tight it is. See this way above? It's going that way. It's going this direction. This is the tighter grain. Wider grain, wider apart. Follow me.
Philip noticed while he was cutting that the log support seemed a little bit hot. So he stopped so we could check it out to make sure we'd clear it. We fortunately would have cleared it, but it's really important to be cautious not to hit the log supports because it's real great for the blade. we cut from our very first log. Well friends, we got it done. The sawmill is completely assembled. Uh, Philip has run a few boards on it. I'm going to give you a little tour of the sawmill and some of the components, the best that I know, and just show you around. So these right here, uh, there's two of them, these are ramps and they're used to hoist the logs from the ground up onto the sawmill. To roll the logs up the ramps, there is a hoist and it's hand cranked and you just crank the log and pull it up. Now Philip uses some tools to help position the logs and get them into place on the sawmill. Once in place, Philip uses a combination of placement guides to secure the log. There's these components here, they slide up and down and then they lock into place. And there are two of them and then there's also these guides here as well and these secure the logs into place and they kind of clamp the logs between them now as Phillips cutting he has to be careful to always be watching the placement of these guides so that he doesn't damage the blade while he is using the sawmill when we were putting this sawmill together the only piece of it that was actually assembled in the factory is this section right here so this includes the blades and the motor so that green back section and this is the only piece that was assembled in the factory everything else including the mounts and things that we mounted this onto we assembled here at the homestead now this is the heart of the sawmill back here. This is the actual sawmill. Um, the blade is here. This is the motor. This controls the sawmill. Um, he compresses this lever that starts the blade to turning and then he slowly pushes this along the log and it just pushes along like a train on a track. Now we have added a bucket to collect the sawdust. The bucket fills about every two runs of the sawmill and we're going to use that sawdust in our compost and wherever else we want to use it but rather than waste it on the ground we are collecting it we had to get a little bit creative to create a shield the sawdust actually blows out of this right here and so we had to block this to collect the sawdust this actually keeps the band clean so it doesn't gum up because if it gums up, you're gonna get it riding wrong. There's bearings in there that the blade rides up against. So if, if this is the bearing that spins or rolls, the blade butts up to it. But on the top and bottom, there's actually guides that keep it straight. If you were to take that thin band and just cut wide open without those guides, that thing would be in there all wobbly. And if you've ever used a bow saw before, case in point, it always gets a crooked cut. So that helps tremendously. And this guide here, I can only go in so far, and that's okay. So the long, the wider the log, obviously the more movement that band would have. So I want it to be right outside the thickness of that log as I'm making a cut, and it keeps it all stable. Um, 
These things I found operating them from the other side. So I loosen them up, I come up to the log, and I can either reach underneath, reach underneath and pull it to it, or I can do it like this, push it up to it, tighten it up, this has to be open, bring it up to the log, tighten it down, and it locks it in. So it's definitely easier operating this from this side. Winch is great. I think I would make a spot for it to mount when I'm not using it. Even if I... It's kind of hard to put it in here and then just drop shoot. But even down here is not a bad idea. Build a false floor. Put this down in there and just put the panel back in. You don't have all kinds of sawdust. I got this trailer kit. It'll cut 16 foot 11 inch logs. My plan is if I had to cut anything longer, use the hoist that I have. I have winches set up on poles. I have bobcat. But ultimately in the barn when I build it, this thing will be positioned at a certain spot. I'll hoist it to the ceiling, pick it up off the track, pull the trailer right on out, set this thing right down on the ground, and on the ground have as long as I want to cut. 20, 30, 40 foot long log, have that angle iron run all the way down with stops at each end and everything will be leveled on concrete pads. So if you want to face your logs for the inside of the log cabin, if you want to cut a 20 foot log and it's a little longer than you, that's the best way to do it. Um, and then when I'm done, bring the trailer back in, pick this back up, put it on here. So try to set myself up to where I can move this around the property when needed and think wisely if I'm going to go make some money doing a job. This is. I did my research on this piece of equipment and for the money, didn't want to go with a couple other brands for a few other reasons. One thing I didn't like when the logs come on up, that track, you got to take it down. But once the log is loaded, it's up and you really don't need it in your way. All those tracks, the two tracks that I put down there, so operating it from the other side is definitely a major plus. There is a tow board. One of these actually is a tow board. So, which actually allows you to lift the log to make sure that your first cut is as straight as you want it to be. And I have to find out why I didn't get one. I thought I had one order, but for some reason it's not here. And this, basically the center just, it lifts up. So it'll adjust that oblong log. So if it's 10 inches at one end and 6 inches at another end, it'll actually help you cut it a whole lot straighter instead of trying to roll it around so much. Having a PV stick or a cant hook, Watch your fingers. Certain things wear gloves, certain things don't wear gloves. So we have three clips on the bottom here, one on the bottom over here, and the holes weren't drilled perfect, and that one took a little adjusting and it finally lined up. I'll leave this one done until I take the knob. There she is, still nice and tight within a quarter inch. This is supposed to be loose. This is the follower belt. This is on here, ride loose as normal. Um, they have you check everything to make sure that the blade rides centered on the wheel. You gotta just kind of look in there and, and check the gauge. It should be the same from the front as it is in the back. And then there's four adjustments on the back side of this that actually turn that wheel. It's crazy. I'm glad I don't have to mess with that right now. Learning it has been complicated enough, but it is nice. And then we have a sawdust collector, which if I make a box on the bottom of this and mount it centered up in the barn, kind of like a, what you see at a, a car wash, with the air hose and stuff up on the top, they kind of just telescope out right on the cable. It'll actually follow this whole thing. It'll suck it all up. Then we can then repurpose Everything out of here is going to be repurposed. Whether it's sawdust into the garden, into the animal pens, if it's trimmings, we got firewood, we got kindling, we got spacers in between the logs, even the bark, everything gets used as a fuel one, one place or another. But this just allows us to utilize so many more resources on the farm that you couldn't normally do or couldn't afford to have somebody else do for you. So it was a good investment. Do you want to do the wrap up?
Thank you for watching. Oh. Do you like yours? Yeah. Ah, well, I just want to thank you for following along with us as we continue our adventure, no matter what we're doing on the farm. This has been a, a, a wonderful piece, a wonderful addition to the farm, and hopefully you'll follow us for more. If you have any comments, tips, tricks, leave them in the comments box. Everybody's situation is different. Some fit one thing, some fit different. So please add the comments. If there's something you see that we're doing wrong and we have, you have an easier way to do it, or all ears. But again, clip the, how do you say? Clip your, clip the clip, or click the button on, to subscribe. Subscribe. And uh, continue click, to follow us. Bell. She does this much better. I just want to do the work. Thank you.